So who knows what the number one failure mechanism in the shack is? Yeah, you guessed it. It's the power supply. And especially for those of us that use DC power supplies to fire up their transceivers or their solid-state linear amplifiers or possibly their military equipment that includes dynamotors and other ridiculous uh, loads that we put on the power supplies. It doesn't take very long to, to uh, run into a problem where the power supply fails or starts smoking or whatever. And this happened to me. This has been a supply I've counted on for several years to run my various military radios. It's a 28 volt, 15 amp switcher. And I have put a big capacitor on the output of it to take the surges that I get with these dynamotors from these various transmitters. So, this guy started smoking. Anyway, can you see it's got this nice Corcom RF filter on the input? That's, that's useful for, for the ham shack. And it provides protection as well. And just a simple indicator and on-off switch. And that's all there was to this power supply. Anyway, I wanted to replace this, and at the Hamfest, I was lucky enough to discover a linear supply that had a big fat transformer on it and a big filter capacitor. And I'm going to use that as a foundation to build a modest power supply of maybe 28 volts at uh, 10 to 15 amps out. So let's see if we can build a simple supply using this foundation that I found at the Hamfest. This is not a deep dive into regulators and current limiting and so on. It's just a cookbook type approach to get a linear power supply for my ham shack. So this is a typical 723 regulated power supply. And uh, this one is set for uh, 24 volts at uh, just a little over 10 amps out. has several pass transistors. It's a typical circuit from the late 60s, early 70s. And the 723 was uh, one of the first really popular regulator ICs that had features like uh, adjustable voltage, current limit, and uh, usually had to use another transistor to drive a whole bank of power transistors on a big heatsink. But uh, this linear power supply type is still in production today. So the 723 represents a chip uh, like the 555 or the 741 op amp that really never went out. It just, uh, since invention, they just keep making them. And uh, I am not going to try to repair this power supply with the 723 circuit. I want to do something a little simpler and a little more modern uh, for a 28 volt supply. So I was looking on the internet and I saw a few different diagrams using the uh, LM317 generic 1 amp adjustable and I just wanted to strap some 2N3055s or something like that on. But then I thought, hey, I really would like some current limiting here too not just a fuse that blows up when I go over 10 amps. So I'm going to attempt to do a current limiter as well. And rather than use a circuit board like this, I'll just put some terminal strips in there and uh, get the circuit laid down in uh, plenty of room. I will maintain the pass transistors that the thing already has. I'll maintain the main filter capacitor, which is 23,000 microfarads, and I test it. It's good. And the transformer. So this is a beautiful foundation. It's got the pass devices, the capacitor, uh, the rectifiers are on the other side, and a big transformer. So really all we're building is the regulation part of it, and hopefully some kind of current limiting, and the protection circuitry and uh, RF protection uh, circuitry. And uh, we'll have a 28 volt power supply that I can use to power up some of my military equipment. So why didn't I just repair the 723 circuit? Well, I really didn't want to go that way. The 723 on that circuit board is the TO style rather than the DIP style, so I just didn't want to deal with it. 
There are several circuits that use external pass transistors or MOSFETs strapped on to an LM317 regulator. Some use PNP transistors and some use standard NPN or N-channel MOSFET devices. And uh, I decided that I was just going to use a simple NPN power transistors on the power supply to act as voltage followers directly off the LM317's output. So I did want to have some kind of current limiting. Uh, this circuit uses the classic 2 NPN transistor current limiter, but it's adapted for the LM317 circuit. The addition of the current limiter transistor and how it turns the pass transistors off during a short circuit event, it works basically as follows. The voltage drop across the combined emitter resistors forms a composite resistor value. Call that the sense resistor. Now, when the voltage across that sense resistor reaches a point where it approaches the turn-on voltage of that limiting transistor, the limiting transistor begins to short the base and emitter of the pass transistors together. This starves the transistor and turns it off. And uh, the maximum current is being drawn, however, so that's a big disadvantage to this type of current limiter. But at this point, the output voltage falls, meaning that the series pass transistor in the regulated power supply, it's got an increased voltage across it because the output's at basically zero and the input's at the full output voltage of the, uh, of the capacitor. It could be 40 volts across those devices. This increases the power dissipation uh, within those pass transistors. So this is not ideal because the electronic circuit design stage allowance needs to be made for this high voltage condition. And that might require that you need a larger series pass transistor, as well as additional heat sink capability, higher voltage devices. Hence, I'm overkilling it because these transistors happen to be on the supply. It's using six, basically seven amp pass devices to share a load that might be only 10 amps. Now, there are better circuits than this. A foldback current limiter is an example of a more, little more elegant approach than this. There's also better regulation systems where we sense the very output of the power supply and feed that back to the LM317. So I expect I'm going to have a little bit of loss through, all, through the pass transistors as well as the sense resistor in this circuit. So at full load, I might have a regulation of only a volt or two rather than having excellent regulation. But that's good enough. Remember, I'm just trying to power up some military equipment. So what's the exact value of that sense resistor, the combina combination of past devices, uh, the 10 ohm base resistors, and the gain of that current limiting device? These represent variables. They're all variables that will affect the exact current that has the protection and it's going to affect when the protection actually cuts in. So I have to leave this to you. I have to leave it to the experimenter to determine the exact values that will work for your particular build. Maybe you need 24 volts at 5 amps and you don't want any more than that. You'd have to uh, play with those resistor values to give you what you're looking for. There's plenty of improvements that can be made to this simple circuit. And uh, here's a couple of diagrams that show some some basic improvements. I do suggest using fuses, however, just as backup. We have an input power supply fuse. Probably a good idea to have a fuse between the major capacitor and the regulator. And it might not be a bad idea to have a fuse on the output as well. These are fast blow fuses and you want to size it for what you need between 5 and 15 amps. And uh, good luck on uh, this power supply. It's working for me. So the rebuild is pretty much completed. Um, I did not have to mount a lot of terminal strips. I just used the components themselves and kind of soldered components between the terminals. And as you can see, I've got a wishbone of resistors that uh, go back to the current sense transistor, which you can't see down here, but it's a transistor that I lifted out of an ATX power supply. You can see it right here. And of course the LM317 right here. 
I'm going to slowly bring it up on the Variac. Now this particular transformer had two windings. It had a high current winding, basically, that goes to the regulator itself, a high current winding for the pass transistors, and then it had a separate winding, these two red wires uh, that were rectified, and they went to the LM723 circuit card. Now, I don't think I need to use the separate power supply for the LM317 because I once I bring the transformer to full output voltage, it's going to be so high compared to the 28 volts that I'll be okay. So, let's bring things up on the Variac slowly. Bring it up slowly. And this is uh, just a... a AC Variac with a very small fuse on it. If it pops, it pops. It's not going to hurt anything. No regulation yet. Okay, there we are. We're in regulation. 27.8 volts. Okay, I preset this. That's why it's at 28 volts. Now, it'd be interesting to know, now that we're in regulation, what the voltage is going into the regulator. It should be higher, right? So let's take a peek. This is right on the capacitor. Okay, 34 volts. With the 34 volts, we're well into regulation. So that represents the voltage drop between the input of the regulator and the output of the regulator. Now, interestingly enough, we have to be careful not to exceed the input voltage on the LM317, so let's keep going with the Variac. Forty point two two. Does anybody know what the maximum voltage that you're supposed to put on an LM317 is? Any guesses? That's right, it's 40 volts. Isn't that interesting that uh, this thing at full blast is 40 volts into the regulator? So, for safety's sake, I think I'm going to put a couple of diodes in line just to the LM317. We'll insert that into the schematic. That's not going to hurt anything with the regulation because, remember, that's the input to the LM317. And, of course, the pass transistors can have the full 40 volts on them. But, yeah, we're... Uh, we're tempting the devil here, putting 40 volts into the LM317. Now, will the chip take more than that? I hope that they uh, designed in some margin, but we'd be exceeding the maximum. Turning down the Variac. Now, there is no bleeder per se. And this is a huge capacitor, so it would take a long time for this capacitor to discharge with just turning the uh, voltage down. The original supply was set for 24 volts, but I imagine you could probably adjust it to 28 using the onboard uh, trim pots. Okay, I've now inserted a couple of diode drops before the LM317. So now on the output we should have 28 volts, yes. And we've got 39.58 on the input capacitor and... Let's see what we got here on the 17. 38.27 compared to 39.63. So that brings it down to the safe region. Now, I, I probably we're going to be okay. Once under load, I imagine that voltage to go even lower. The voltage drops, of course, will go up under current load. So it should only improve the situation under load. So let's put a load on this thing. Okay, now I've got a voltmeter and an ammeter in line. This is useful. We can see the volts and we can see the amps at the same time. And again, i got 11 or 12 ohms involved here. Okay, we're showing 27.33 volts. So I'm going to do a little adjustment. OK, 
kind of hard to do this without messing something up. Okay, there we are. I put it up to 28 volts, no trouble. Now at this low current, of course, the resistors are getting very warm, but the uh, TL3 cans are still ice cold. Okay, it's not even feeling it yet. Okay, I agree it's not the prettiest hookup in the world, but these two leads are going over to one of my surplus radios. It's going over to the BC652 tank receiver. It has an onboard dynamotor, and hopefully this thing has enough juice to uh, allow it to fire up without smoking. Okay, there's the BC652 receiver. Let's plug in the power supply. Let's verify the voltage. 26 volts. Okay, that's a good place to start. I'm not even going to touch the potentiometer. I'm just going to hit the on-off switch. Let's see what happens. Well, that's a good sign. The receiver definitely is coming on. So I will connect a speaker and an antenna next. Okay, it's picking up CHU, middle of the day. Okay, we're going to declare success here. Okay, after running the radio for about 15 minutes, I want to touch the heat sink. Ice cold. The past transistors are just slightly warm to the touch, hardly even working, which is what you'd expect. The receiver probably only draws 3 amps. But yeah, uh, let's uh, let's say success on this project. Anyway, a lot more to go on this. I have to put protective circuits on, off switches, indicators, you know, uh, line cord stuff, all the regular safety things in this. But basically the simple Linear power supply is working. Okay, so I think I have a working foundation for a power supply. I've tested it on one of my military receivers that has a dynamotor on board. Next, I'll be adding some filtering, proper switching, and protection circuits. And, uh, you know, again, this was a uh, not a deep dive. This was just a, uh, a simple approach to get a regulated power supply using an LM317. So I hope you enjoyed this little power supply video, something a little different from the Microwave 1 channel. The circuit that I selected came off a, uh, a Polish website, Electroda.com. I believe it's uh, Polish, German, and uh, England, English. Uh, everything seems to be in English on the site. It's electroda.com. And uh, the circuit came from a Mr. Christoph, and he seems to be a power supply expert. So um, he claims to have a colleague, Kozak84, who came up with the basic circuit that he uh, improvised on.